Welcome back to America's Commercial Real Estate Show. I'm Michael Bull. This segment is brought to you by GetValuate.com. This is a great analysis tool for investment real estate. Check it out when you get a chance. GetValuate.com. Today our show is Hotels 2018. My guests are Brian Waldman with Peachtree Hotel Group and David Marvin with Legacy Ventures. And gentlemen, you guys are on the firing line. You, you own these properties. You manage them. You develop them. And, uh, you know, we talked about the... Kind of your, the, the, I guess it's rosy out there, right? We have the tax cuts. Things have been going well for you guys in the hotel industry. Where are the big opportunities moving forward? Where are the trends or the opportunities that you guys see? Well, um, again, our, our approach is pretty rifle shot, but I think that um, the thing is that the, the hospitality industry in terms of assets and in terms of consumer preferences really evolves over time. And I've heard it said that the hotel, the hotel seg segment of the real estate world is the most under demolished uh, of any. And, and basically things change and with that uh, opportunity exists. I think that uh, guests today are more interested in having an experience than having a commodity offering. I think that leisure travel is, is probably the fastest growing segment of our customer base. And uh, so the statement about uh, experience is, is probably more true for the leisure traveler. So I think that, uh, you know, it's possible to, to, to find hotels that are ripe for repositioning, uh, rebranding, uh, to introduce more of a customer experience. One of our fortes as a, as a company is fairly formidable food and beverage operations, which uh, which we craft uh, to to meet the opportunity uh, at a at a at a property, and so really we we find uh, that's a useful arrow in our quiver to reposition. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. You know, it's about the the food and the drink, right, and the service. Right, or the drink and the food. <laughs> right, <laughs> the drink first, right, and do you guys see similar opportunities? Yeah, I think for us, um, you know, branding is critical. You know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, most of what we do is affiliated with you know one of the four big brands, and we feel that there's a lot of value that's created from that. Um, you know, for us in terms of opportunity, we really focus more on the secondary markets. So um, you know, we've seen a ton of competition. You know, you look at the top ten markets, every read, every private equity group is bidding on the same. You know six assets or 10 assets that the brokers have out there. Uh, but focusing more on the secondary markets, you know, it's definitely given us a lot more opportunities. And uh, because we'll invest nationwide, it's just, it's, it's a bigger plethora of, of opportunities to look at to find, you know, the right ones. I completely agree with David's comments in terms of, um, you know, branding and what the brands bring and the experience. And, um, you know, the brands have definitely pushed their brand standards to create sort of a unique experience. And, you know, when you look at the big hotel companies, whether it's, you know, Marriott or Hilton, they have all of these brands, but they're really trying to target those brands to specific consumers. And we feel like that creates an opportunity. The other opportunity that we've really tried to capitalize on this year is the Marriott Starwood merger. Um, you know, we found some opportunities of underperforming assets or what were underperforming assets that we think will benefit, um, you know, with the Marriott um, influence behind them as Marriott repositions, in particular, the Aloft and Element brands. Yeah. It must be amazing for you guys to go visit another hotel somewhere because you can go in if you're looking at the asset and just stay there as a customer, right? Get the experience. You must go in and go, boy, we could run this a lot better. Right? You must see that all the time. So what are some of the trends you guys see? What, what should we expect in 2018 and beyond? What's new? What, what, uh, what's happening out there trend-wise? Gosh. I, you know, you get, you get to a point you don't think anything's new. Uh, I know that's contrary to what I just said. But I see steady as it goes for 2018. Mm -hmm. I think that the fundamentals are strong. I think that... Uh, for, for a variety of reasons, I think the barriers to entry into the business will remain significant, whether it's uh, cost or availability of capital only to the, to the most qualified uh, buyers and investors. 
I also think that, um, uh, you know, I think, I think continuing to move the needle towards having uh, a good guest experience, not just to stay, but truly an experience with great customer service and uh, supportive technology is, uh, is, is good, but those aren't new ideas. I mean, those are things your mother could have told you about, <laughs> you know, be nice and, and engender a good guest experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I think technology will continue to evolve, and I think, again, coming back to the brands, when you look at the brands, I think they're all trying to come up with, you know, what's that next gadget? It's, you know, you look back, in the last cycle, I guess it was a little more than the last cycle, but you know, when Starwood came out with the idea of we're going to have a great shower, we're going to have a great bed, well, is that really revolutionary for the hotel industry? I don't know that it is, but I think with technology, you're seeing the brands try to come up with new ways to capture that guest. And as the brand companies grow and they have more brands, I think they have more of a focus on differentiating themselves. So I think it's going to be interesting to see how they differentiate their brands and try to lock in on you know what the customer base is, who is that customer for each of their specific brands, so that way they can continue to grow their portfolio without cannibalizing themselves. How about the trends for some of the customers who are into technology, like using kiosks to, to check in, so maybe that's more efficient. Are you guys using any of that? Do you see that as important moving forward? Yeah, I, I, look, I think the brands are pushing all of that. Uh, you know, I'm an old guy, uh, and I think that the value of some of those things is overstated. There is that slice of the traveling public that wants as little interaction with the front desk as possible. And for them, having the kiosk is great. You know, I think the brands, the big brands have rolled out, um, you know, no key uh, door locks so that you can theoretically check in, use your smartphone to actually get into the room. Um, you know, is that a differentiator? Is that a reason why I'm going to stay at one hotel instead of another? The answer for me personally is no, because I'd rather go the traditional way. But uh, you know, understanding the millennials and the 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 the, the rest of us that uh, you know have have a millennial spirit or whatever, maybe for a, a segment that's a that's a differentiator. Well, but I think brands, to some extent, are chasing their tails coming up with a next gadget. Yeah. yeah, I think that's also how you create customer loyalty through service, right? At the end of the day, we're in the service business and if you're checking in with your phone and you're doing all these other things, how are you differentiating yourself versus, you know, I think about some of my best hospitality stays and it's because you had a great front desk person or a great breakfast person or whatever and it's that interaction that I think, you know, helps create loyalty to, you know, whether it's a specific hotel or a brand. Um, so I, I agree with David that I think it sort of cuts both ways. Yeah, I, I think that's really key, that the people that you do interact with treat you well with respect and appreciate you as a customer. But the uh, last two hotels I checked into were in, both in Chicago, and I was disappointed with how long it took me to check in. You know, I've traveled. Um, at this point, I'm, I really just want to go put my bags yeah. down and, and relax a minute. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and I thought, well, if, this, if they'd had a kiosk, I would have appreciated it. Even though I'm a people person, I think, you know, you do business uh -huh. together and, and, and it works better. Well, what about challenges moving forward? You know, we have immigration issues and we have uh, rising cost of, of seem, seemingly everything. What are the challenges you guys are kind of looking out for moving forward to, to conquer? I think the number one challenge is labor. Hard to get good people, more expensive. Uh, you know, with, with unemployment on a national level being, you know, 4%-ish, and with a lot of pressure on immigrations or, or being welcoming to immigrants, there just isn't the pool of talent. And uh, so it becomes increasingly competitive, and you have to pay uh, materially more, which which uh, squeezes margin. And so I think the number one uh, challenge that we're dealing with uh, in terms of trying to drive for our, uh, profitable operations is labor. Yeah, I think that's a big big thing about the hotel industry. You know, we're the commercial real estate show and we talk about all types of properties and sectors here, but when I think of your industry, you just, you just mentioned, hey, what's the big uh, thing that makes you different? It's your people. And, and if, if employment is, is tight, and you know salaries are rising uh and you need good people it's more of a business i think than most any other commercial real estate sector we deal with here 
And so what, what are the other challenges you guys see moving forward? I think for us, we're seeing a lot on the cost side. You know, again, labor is definitely the big one, mm -hmm. but just throughout the P&L, you know, we talk about if you look at, um, you know, the, the national forecast, they're saying rev per growth of 2.5% next year. And we're seeing on a lot of properties, property taxes going through the roof. You know, we're underwriting it, and as part of our underwriting process, we work with tax consultants to get estimates for the next few years. And, you know, we're seeing 40, 50 percent increases in some properties. Uh -huh. um, you know, same thing with insurance. We have a lot of properties in Florida in our portfolio. You know, we're seeing big growth there. So I definitely see it on the labor side. But as we underwrite, it's great to say that your top line is going to grow, but just managing the expenses and making sure that your top line growth or what you're doing there is, you know, at least equaling or offsetting your increases in expenses as well as a challenge. Yeah. Well. Before we end the show, since I have two experts here, I got to ask you kind of a tip that you would leave our audience with for if they're an investor uh, in a hotel uh, concept or or they think about developing a hotel or or building one. Uh, what's a tip you'd leave our audience with? Well, I, I would offer. Uh, I think that um, particularly for somebody new to the business and 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 even an old timer like myself, I think brand and affiliation with with the top. Uh, brand is absolutely essential. We have developed hotels as independent hotels mm -hmm. and um, and uh, as we were discussing before the show, you know that might work well when the tide is rising but when the tide is is sinking you really want to have a strong brand behind you and so I think going with the best brands and uh, making sure you have a great affiliation. Brian? I, I agree with that. I'll give a little bit more lighthearted answer just to say that, you know, for anyone that's not in the hotel space, if you're looking to get into the hotel space, be cautious, be careful, and let me do everything I can to talk you out of it. <laughs> and if you still want to invest in hotels, then let's talk about it. But, um, you know, we've seen over and over people that have been extremely successful in other areas of real estate that have tried to come into the hotel space. But, you know, as we talked about before, it's an operating business and there are so many other complexities and nuances related to brand and labor and operations and everything else that you, it's not something you do part time. Yeah. What about a tip for an operator, a manager out there of hotels today? I think it's all about. Look, I think that uh, it gets back to people. I think it's about uh -huh. supervising people in a way where you encourage and recognize great performance. And uh, there's a tremendous uh, esprit de corps that's, that's developed. One way to do that, and many hotels do this, is to do uh, a fair amount of community service as a group, something that we've embraced. But uh, you, really have to, you really have to encourage and notice good work to perpetuate that, which in, in turn uh, means that the team is going to deliver great service uh, to your guests, and your guests are going to come back. So good people, and take care of those good people. Recognize them. I like it. Yep. Anything else to add to that for an operator? Um, buy low, sell high. Yeah, buy low, sell high. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, gentlemen, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate your insight. Great, thank we you. Enjoyed it. And thank you for joining us around the country. And uh, comment, let us know what you think, and uh, connect with us on your favorite social media. And be sure and join us next week. Until then, be sure you always lead, learn, and laugh, and join us for America's Commercial Real Estate Show.